Welcome to K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway, and we will just get right into it. We are here for one very, very important reason, and it is because Coleman Hawkins is a wildcat. Yes, believe it or not, K-State has completed their basketball roster, and the transfer edition that they just got might be the best player of them all. Coleman Hawkins spent the first four seasons of his career at Illinois playing for former Wildcat Brad Underwood. He led uh, or was part of the leading group because there were so many guys that could kind of carry the load for Illinois. Uh, I mean, TJ Shannon was probably your number one, but he uh, obviously had reasons that he wasn't number one at times this year. But took him to the Elite Eight was a big part of it. Over 12 points a game, six boards a game. He can shoot it from the outside. He stands at six foot ten. There is a lot about Coleman Hawkins' game to talk about, and there's a lot to like about it. Uh, but, Drew, I'll just let you go with your initial thoughts on K-State getting the job done with a major add in Coleman Hawkins. Yeah, I think that with adding Coleman Hawkins, it just kind of – I don't want to say it. I don't want to spike the football and say that, oh, I was right this whole time. But it, it's kind of why you need to stay patient during this process and filling out the roster. And I know that there's so much information that comes out hour to hour in the transfer portal. But I think that this is kind of why you stay patient because you kind of, at this point with this basketball staff of Jerome Tang, I kind of just expect them to figure it out. And you could say that they've probably made their best three additions have been the last three. So I think that once they kind of get everything going that there's no real denying that they have a lot of good evaluators and good recruiters on their staff. And I just think that once they get everything figured out, like this roster is ready to go. Like it, it is probably top 20, top 15 caliber. Uh, we'll get into Coleman Hawkins a little bit more, but, and how he fits, but you can't deny how not to be the, the corny one in here, but how elevated, the, the roster is. Yeah, there is, there's zero doubt about that. There, it, It's a legit elevation because here is what the roster looks like now. It is completed, but the first transfer portal get and the last transfer portal get in my eyes are the two most impactful to K-State because I think those are going to be your two best players this upcoming season. Doug McDaniel from Michigan and Coleman Hawkins from Illinois, two Big Ten transfers, two guys that can score – and Hawkins, obviously, with his length and athleticism, there's a lot more to his game that he can do. Uh, but that's big time what you went out and did there. And this is a roster now like Achora Chor, Uganda and Yensu, Coleman Hawkins, Doug McDaniel, all really highly thought of transfers for different reasons. Guys that have upside one way or the other. Obviously, we know that on Yensu and Hawkins, there's NBA potential that sits inside of those guys that was even thought about this year. And, uh, I, I mean, this is just a really impressive ad. And not to mention, Hawkins fits in with all the other guys that we kept adding up that if he was on K-State's roster last year, he would have been their best three-point shooter. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah, what makes the Hawkins ad so intriguing is how many guys now are over 6'7 on the roster. Like, this turned into a roster where last year you could say that they didn't have a lot of length and they didn't have a lot of height. And now they have height and length just in spades. And it, it just goes back to what DY and I and you have all been saying, that Casey got Doug McDaniel, and they said, how can we best fill out the roster around him? And that's to keep adding elite shooting and elite length and athleticism. And Coleman Hawkins is another example because I'm really intrigued to see how he plays on the wing. I know that he played mostly the four and five in Illinois, but I think it was more kind of out of necessity for uh, Illinois than as what he really truly wants to be and probably where NBA uh, scouts see him. So to have him on the wing, I think will be more intriguing. And another one where, holy cow, rebounding was a big issue for K-8 in both Jerome Tank's first season and this past season. I don't think that's going to be the case this year with you got Onyenso, Coleman Hawkins, and Atora Chor because all three of those guys can really, really rebound the ball. And, and even last year, we saw David Gasson really take a jump in the rebounding category. So I think that rebounding defense and three-point shooting are going to be just fine for K-State. And I think that in this day and age in basketball, that's probably what you need the most. 
Yeah, no doubt about it. So you brought up the height, and in K-State has gotten significantly taller in the last two and a half, three weeks now with Achora Achora, Yugena Inyenso, and Coleman Hawkins. It, personally, I don't think that this is going to be a problem for K-State. I don't think that the height situation is an issue. I know that some people have questions about, like, well, can, can Hawkins really play the three? Because that's, in an ideal world, what K-State was still kind of looking for. Here's the thing. If you watch his game, offensively, there should be zero question about Coleman Hawkins being able to assimilate to playing that role primarily, if that's the way you go. Because I also want it to be, you know, at least in people's minds. And I think that this is sometimes where um, Jerome Tang and what he's been able to do in building rosters and building teams and momentum and excitement for people, you can kind of get blinded by it sometimes. We have to kind of go back and remember that Yugana and Yenso and David Gasson and Bayfall and like some of these guys, you're not going to get what you, you kind of think there. Like there is a world where Yugana and Yenso is not starting next season for K State. And that doesn't mean that it was a bad addition, but you're adding a guy that played 18 minutes a game at Kentucky, didn't score a lot, but he does a lot of other things well, which will get him time on the floor, rebounding, blocking shots. But there's also a realm where you don't need that to happen and you go a little bit smaller, one, two, three on the floor and then four and five have the height. But I do think that Coleman Hawkins can handle it. I think it'll he'll fit in and be able to make it happen uh, no matter how K-State wants to use him and play him. And I think defensively, I I'm not overly concerned about that. Length always is really a big thing that helps defensively. The bigger you are, the better chance you already have at playing defense. And Sure, there are going to be teams that they can use their guards in ways to kind of abuse Doug McDaniel, who's a little bit lesser on the defensive end sometimes. Get yourself into advantageous spots, but it's at the end of the day, it's still college basketball, and length is going to maybe give guys some decent looks. They still have to make the shot, and that's kind of to you know steal the the philosophy that T.J. Otzelberger has. But his whole thing has been about like okay, we're going to give teams open threes because in college basketball, they're not going to make them that much like at a, a rate that's deadly to us. We're going to focus on being so good at everything else. And so if teams are going to have to try and beat you by shooting the ball from deep, more power to them because K-State right now has a roster that it's going to be tough to drive because if you do and you get by a guy, theoretically you're thinking you're still going to have Onyenso or David Gasson or somebody in there ready to rock and roll to at least adjust the shot and make it tougher on somebody. So I, I'm not worried at all about Coleman Hawkins if he has to go three, four, or five for K-State. That People should just celebrate this for what it is because this is an awesome, awesome addition for K-State. Uh, Elliot Vo thinks it's a great addition too, and she's nine months old. So that's, I mean, that's where you, like if a nine-month-old already knows how good of a get this is, you should understand how good of a get it is, no matter what, you know, reservations you might have about, can he defend? Can he do this or that? He'll find a way, and the the negatives are far outweighed by what good is there in his game. Uh, and I, I'm really fired up about this ad for K-State because this is just one of those where this, this tells me K-State already thought that they had a roster that was pretty solid and could compete. So they were just in the business of who's the best player available? Let's use the rest of our resources and get him to Manhattan, and that's what they did. They know what they're doing. This is shaping up to be a really good K-State basketball season. Yeah, I think that, like you said, he can play the 3-4 or the 5. I think that he probably plays more like a 3 than he does a 5, which is why I'm not real concerned about him playing on the wing because he's such a good passer. And I think that's kind of the underrated part of his game is that he can really pass the ball and can make plays for other people. And like that, he can just get around guys that aren't as quick as him. The, the one concern I would probably have would be how well he can defend on the perimeter. But like you said, like as long as he is in the area, it, his length is just going to bother people on the wing. Because I know that he only weighed at like, or he only came at like 6'8", I believe, at the NBA Combine. But it's like 6'8 and a half, but he has really, really long arms and can really get after you. And I think the most kind of intriguing part for me isn't even like Hawkins on the floor. I'm really, really excited to see Hawkins off the floor and even on the floor when he's cooking a little bit because 
when when Hawkins gets it going, he's not afraid to let you know about it. And I think that that's kind of something that K-State has missed and missed last year because you kind of got that with Marquis Noel and Keontae Johnson and even Desi Sills to an extent on the Elite Eight team. But you didn't really get any of that and kind of see that dog and that like fire in a player last season. And I think that that's something that K-State probably needed. And it will be extremely fun to watch Coleman Hawkins once he scores a bucket to just immediately talk trash to whoever's guarding him. You know, we are muted again. I don't even know that he needs to score a bucket. I think he just needs to to be able to have Twitter at his disposal or something like that. Like yeah. uh, Coleman Hawkins is definitely the kind of guy that you're either going to love him or you're going to hate him for all the other stuff. I don't think you're ever going to hate what he does on the basketball floor, maybe occasionally, but like it's going to be far outweighed by the goods and everything. And uh, I mean, as you can see here from really this, I thought this Iowa game was the best highlight of what Coleman Hawkins uh, can and can't do at times because there is supreme confidence in his skills. He's going to try and do some things passing the ball that you go, eh, I don't know, maybe, maybe you shouldn't do that. Uh, but I mean, he had 30 points in this game, five assists, five steals. And, uh, he, I mean, he turned the ball over a handful of times in the game too, but like he, he can get it done. He's an impressive player. And, uh, this is a really, really good get for K state. And I just think that, uh, they're, they're going to be able to find a way to make the fit happen. And I, we saw earlier in the clip, uh, probably one of the second or third plays early on there, like you could see the perimeter defense when he needed it on a smaller guard type player where he didn't necessarily, he didn't stick with him the best, but that length at 6'10", he was just able to kind of affect it enough. And that's tough for any person to get a sh shot uh, up and off. And also we've talked about this with, with other guys and fit and like how do the, the pieces of the puzzle kind of work together, but he's so talented and, and can handle the ball himself that he opens it up. Like look at how many good looks Illinois gets with him in the offense. And that's kind of the team that K-State has built. Yeah. These last three possessions that we've seen on offense with Illinois in this Iowa game, Hawkins has given them wide open three-point looks because he's backing down a smaller three. And I think that if K-State really wants to utilize that, K-State has the shooters to be able to really knock that knock that down and to really exploit Hawkins' height advantage and just how much length that he has because he's a very, very, very good passer. That's probably, I think, is a very is the most underrated portion of his game because he can do a little bit of everything. I and mean, I know that I said that with a chore, a chore, but it's even on another level with Coleman Hawkins. Like this is this is a very, very good get. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. And uh, I think this is going to be this should give a lot of juice moving forward because I think there was good momentum. I felt good about the roster that K-State had kind of constructed, but I do know that if if you didn't end the transfer portal season with a really good addition or something that kind of kept momentum going, people would not have as much of that momentum heading into July, August, and then obviously when we get closer to the season starting. This is going to carry it through. Like This is going to be nonstop excitement about K-State basketball now, and that's one of the things that this program needed after – you know, a, a not so great season last year. And uh, this is, I mean, I, I, I'm overjoyed with it for K-State because this is one of those that he's just going to be an exciting and fun player to watch. And he, like you said, elevates the roster even more so. And I, I'll say it every time, like nobody wants to cover a loser. Like it, our jobs are far easier and much more fun when K-State is good at football or basketball. And this is one of those things that it, it makes K-State a good basketball team moving forward because I, I'm pretty confident that I know that Jerome Tank can coach, and now I think the roster fits together. When we talked about the puzzle pieces the other day and then looking at the Hawkins tape there and seeing, okay, look at how many open looks that he got guys at, at Illinois. Well, Doug McDaniel can shoot it. Brennan Hazen can shoot it. Like, that's what Hazen was brought here for. He's going to be – the perfect addition. I mean, essentially, Illinois had their version of that last year in, in Luke Goody, who he ended up transferring to Indiana, uh, which I know that a lot of people think Indiana <laughs> overpaid massively for that. Um, CJ Jones shot it well last season. Max Jones has some shooting ability. Uh, it's out there, and this is going to work together where you have 
playmakers, guys that can get to the rim and do things, but also guys that can get their own shot and shoot it from outside. This is a complete roster offensively, and after what we saw last season, that's where K-State really needed to improve. I think they're going to be still really solid on defense. They should be good protecting around the rim, and now we both think they also have the guys to grab the rebounds. So there may be holes in this K-State roster, but they are very, very tiny, and everything else that was a big hole from last year, it's not the duct tape fix anymore. This feels like you went in and and you emptied – the you know all your finances to really do the renovation right, and I think that's what they did for this roster this season. Yeah, I have no concerns about what K State's defense is going to look like because they were probably in a lot worse shape roster wise to defend how they defended last season, and they were still one of the best defenses in the Big Twelve. So now we have all this link, all this size, all this athleticism. I think that they'll probably be one of the best defenses in the Big Twelve again, and. and what, what's crazy about how the Big 12 is is that you can be probably the third best by the metrics and defense in the conference, and you'll still be probably like top eight, top ten in the country. So I think that K-State's defense can really take another jump. I think the offense will be really good. Uh, my final point is that if John Rothstein is watching this, this is your time to put K-State in your top 45. I mean, what are we doing? You can't have Cincinnati that high and not have K-State in your top 45 even before this. But now if K-State is, isn't even like in his top 20 when Cincinnati is like 21, oh, I'll, I'll be in the KSO chat getting all worked up about it probably. Yeah, I, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post this clip, and we're going to get Rothstein on it. I mean, come on, Johnny boy. Uh, yeah, that we our theory is, is that, uh, that uh, he's not tight enough. The birthday text, he doesn't get any back from Jerome Tang or anybody on staff. Uh, so, yeah, he's not very happy about it. Uh, one final note about this video, uh, Coleman Hawkins coming to K-State and so many of the other these other guys. Uh, if you're a K-State man, you should probably give a, a, a shout-out and a big thanks to Wildcat NIL and uh, your fellow alums with, with deep pocketbooks uh, or those that uh, just really, really want to see K-State succeed. Because so much of what K-State did in the portal here is not possible without that. And certainly getting Coleman Hawkins is not. Like, that's not to take away from the fact that Coleman Hawkins wants to play basketball at K-State next year. But he's in the portal. And the final three teams that it seemed he was down to was Louisville, SMU, and K-State. It's kind of a very odd grouping of teams. And you, you understand that in this era, like a guy getting ready to play his fifth year of college basketball, he's looking for for one specific thing. and that's I got to cash in on the NIL, the last chance that I have at it. So that's one thing to, to keep in mind that uh, K-State was able to come through on here. And there's a commitment to Jerome Tang. And now it's about moving forward. Can this commitment NIL-wise translate to results on the floor? That will be very important. Yeah, I think that that's probably the most important thing going forward, not just for K-State, but for kind of all these schools that have pitched together a bunch of NIL money. And have said, okay, go win. And what happens if you don't win? Probably not getting as much in the near future. So uh, this is this is the big year for K State in terms of there's the talent to make something really special happen, but also if you want to see this continue and this type of talent be on the roster moving forward, you have to prove yourself with this team because if this doesn't come through, there are going to be a lot of people that helped out in that NIL space that say to themselves. What was the point of it? We we got bounced in the round of 32. Uh, we we finished sixth in the Big 12. This is a team now with the talent that is there for them. The, the mindset should be, and I think this is the mindset the staff has, no doubt, that you add Coleman Hawkins, all this other stuff going on, they want to be in that conversation with KU, Baylor, Houston, Arizona, moving forward next year where K-State wants to be in the mix going into the final three weeks of the season to win a Big 12 title. And I, I really do think that the addition of Coleman Hawkins shoots you up that list. And I think the fit on this roster is really, really good for a lot of these guys. Yeah, I, I think that this is a roster that can really compete for the Big 12 now. And I know that football season is right around the floor, but I'm equally as excited for basketball right now. So I'm, I'm just kind of ready for the season to start now. Yep, no doubt about it. We still got a ways to go, but K-State, the roster is complete. 
and uh, exciting times for Jerome Tang and his staff. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. If you want more on the Coleman Hawkins edition at K-State, head over to kstateonline.com. You can find us at on three, and we'll have plenty of more news throughout uh, the week here on KSO as maybe commitments on the horizon for football after uh, big official visits over the weekend and plenty of other stuff going on, and we have uh, everything covered for you on a day-to-day basis at KSO and right here on the KSO YouTube and podcast pages. So we are out of here. Till next time, thanks for watching K-State Online.